Alright, so this is a review for Rise of the Red Lantern Saga of the first season of the Green Lantern animated series. And I actually came off liking this show more than what I thought I would. Um, I will say that a lot of the show does have the typical trappings of a first season built up into its 13 episodes. Well, actually, this is not the entire season. Come to find out this is actually part one of... Uh, the first season, the the, thir the first 13 episodes focus primarily on the Red Lanterns, and this largely seems to be an adaption of everything that Jeff Johns has done with the Green Lantern uh, since he began his run on it back circa 2003-2004. Uh, I've addressed before that my knowledge of a lot of the stuff that's happened in his run on the Green Lantern has been kind of hazy because I've only read uh, two or three stories from this, so... Uh, but this show has increased my interest in wanting to go back and see what he actually did uh, with this. And the show is the show is not really broken ground with me in any way. It's your typical animated season, uh, but it does a lot of stuff right that I feel that it should. Uh, number one, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a self-contained show. Uh, a lot of the DC comics are not really cosmic oriented. You know, we kind of remove the Green Lantern from Earth and we get to explore a little bit more of space and added to the fact that I don't know a lot of the alien races of said DC universe, this is fine. We also have no characters who guest star in this that are not tied to the Green Lanterns in any way. Uh, case in point, there's an episode where uh, Kilowog and... Hal actually wind up visiting a prison planet a uh, second time around and they meet some Thanagarians on there and this kind of sparked an annoyance with me because I thought we would be incorporating Hawkman into this but fortunately it was a different Thanagarian so I, I like the fact that the show was self-contained kind of what I felt worked in the favor of the two seasons of the Spectacular Spider-Man which was produced and uh, unfortunately never got to see a third season um, as I said, there are a lot of things that I liked better in this show than what I thought I would. I like the animation style. Uh, if I had to compare this, uh, my expectations for this show would have been what I had for Iron Man Armored Adventures. And with Armored Adventures mediocrity running through it, I was expecting that much from this show, but this did pull a few punches that I did like with it. It's self-contained. Um, we're actually doing a little bit more of bleeding edge adaptions from uh, some of the more recent material from DC. Uh, they've been doing that with their movies, but they hadn't really, I felt, done that with a lot of their animated series, which kind of worked out in this. Uh, a majority of this is taken from Jeff Johns' run on the Green Lantern, and our primary focus is on the Red Lanterns themselves. The series has really made me a fan of Atrocitus. I like what they did with the Green Lantern Corps in here. I know that there's a lot that they had to tone down and censor for this show, but what they let pass with the censors, kind of exploring the uh, the fanatic religion that Atrocitus makes out of this core, is really good. Uh, especially with the church scene where Hal actually uh, infiltrates the group and goes in there, and I, I had like this really weird Church of Satan vibe going on to it, which at this point, I was surprised that this got past censors, but then I kind of got to not be surprised anymore by some of what uh, the censors will let DC get away with in their shows. Um, this is really good stuff. Uh, I like Atrocitus. I like his motivations for what he does. Um, and when we come to the main confrontation at the end of this uh, first tier of uh, the first season with uh, the Guardians and Atrocitus. There's a really refreshing aspect that is done by Hal Jordan, which says, you know, hey, I don't like these guys any more than you do. I don't condone what they did. I don't like the secrets that they kept from us. But, you know, let's try and help you now. And, of course, we have the, the atypical fight in between the protagonist and the antagonist at the end of this. But I really like Hal addressing 
the fact that, you know, the people that he's defending are not perfect. And I, for some reason, I just like that, and I thought it was really well done. Uh, Kilowog is given some good exploration of character in this, and I like the, the self-made additions of Razor and Aya to this series. Um, Razor goes through a major character arc in this story, uh, partially because uh, there's a conversation that's had in between him and Kilowog the first time that they fight. And this kind of causes Razor to rethink his place in the scheme of things. And I, I just thought this was really well done. Uh, the Aya character is really fun as well. This is the best artificial intelligence character that I've seen in a long time in a show. Uh, I'm not really going to put her up on the level of River Tam from uh, Firefly, but she does come pretty close. Um, it just a lot of stuff about this show is good. Uh, there are some other characters that we do get introductions to. We will get a um, we get introductions to a particular Green Lantern in this from an Alan Moore story. Uh, I'm not going to say who it is, but it's really cool. Um, let's see. <clears throat> uh, we get uh, the start of the Blue Lantern Corps in this, and we get uh, acknowledgement of a lot of the other cores which are around from John's run. I think probably the best thing that this series did as far as educating me further about the Green Lantern mythos was that it finally helped me understand... Uh, not really the Star Sapphire core, but uh, Carol Ferris as the Star Sapphire. Um, slight spoiler to this, there is a point when they do take on the uh, the Star Sapphire core that uh, she's actually brought to their planet and she's temporarily made uh, a Violet Lantern. Um, <clears throat> when I originally saw this character in Justice League Doom, uh, and they kind of give her motivations about working with the Legion of Doom as being, you know, how broke her heart and she just wants to kill him. That really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But then when we get in this and, you know, come to find out that actually her uh, her metamorphosis into the Vile Lantern, which was supposed to increase her output of love, actually did it with a tick. And that's why she goes crazy on how. And I was like, oh, okay. And I actually enjoyed that character much better in this than I did over in the uh, the Doom movie. Um, it's just a lot of good stuff in this show. I, I really don't have that much more to say about it. If you've kind of been curious about this, but you've kind of been off-put about it just because of some of the, the tropes that a lot of superhero shows fall into, uh, I would actually say go and check this out because it might surprise you just on how... Uh, much better it would turn out than what you expect it to.